The last Sunday in July, I filled out a card, deposited it, dropped it in the box. In it, I said, eh, I'd like to preach a sermon someday. <laughs> someday. <laughs> Two days later, Susie said, how about August 28th? <laughs> so the moral to the story is, be careful what you ask for, you may get it. So, so last Sunday, Susie explained about the lectionary and that sermons are often taken from it. The first passages for this Sunday are from Jeremiah, Psalms, and Proverbs. My first reaction was, I'm in trouble. How am I going to come up with, with something from these passages? It was a good time for prayer. So, the next uh, passages are from Hebrews 13, 1 through 8, 15, and 16. So, and they go like this. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral. <clears throat> Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. <clears throat> Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. <clears throat> These verses contain a lot, and to try and incorporate them in a sermon where do I start? The first sentence, keep on loving others as brothers and sisters, caught my eye. It reminded me of God's continuing love for us. Real love for others produces tangible actions, kindness to strangers, sympathy for those who are in prison and those who have been mistreated, respect for your marriage vows and contentment with what you have, Make sure that your love runs deep enough to affect your hospitality, empathy, fidelity, and contentment. When I consider the Bible, it appears that God is presented in two different ways in the Old and New Testaments. And of course, this is how I perceive it. Uh, others may differ. <clears throat> Let me see, okay. In the Old Testament, his first commandment is, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. He exhorted the Israelites to worship him and follow his commandments. If they failed, which they did numerous times, he would visit them with wrath and vengeance. God's love does not seem to be expressed as kind and benevolent in the Old Testament. <clears throat> the New Testament seems replete with passages urging love of us for one another, and of God's love for us. One of my personal favorites uh, was written by Paul in uh, 1 Corinthians 13. He writes, and, and I really do like this a lot. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries 
and all knowledge, and I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. <clears throat> Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, I talked like a child. When I became an adult, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part that I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Jesus spoke of love in Matthew 22, 36. He was asked, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. Another statement of love is written by Paul in Romans 8, 38 and 39, when he stated, this gives me great uh, hope and confidence. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. For me, this, again, this is a powerful reassurance of God's love for us. <clears throat> I have sometimes wondered, what's God's plan for me? Uh, I was uh, married two weeks after turning 19, went on to complete college, graduated, attained a master's degree, CPA certificate. My Navy affiliation spanning 26 years included submarines, surface ships, and designation as a Navy carrier pilot. We have raised three kids who are good Christian citizens. At 81, I'm still not sure what his plan for me is, but I can rest assured that God is still at work, and he's uh, in me and still at work in you. One verse of God's love and plan for us all was proclaimed by Paul in Philippians 1, 5, and 6. Because of our partnership in the gospel, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Beloved of Christ, amen.